When you imagine the world, the size of each continent and where they sit in relation to each other, chances are your mental image looks like this. But as familiar as this picture of the world may seem, this everyday use map is actually very incorrect. Take a look at any map of the world. If it looks like this one, as most maps in schools do, then your whole perception of our world is incredibly inaccurate. We all know that Africa is big. It is in fact a gigantuan place, which is something that our maps have often failed to portray. However, despite the common perception that Africa is a large landmass, it is still one that is vastly underestimated by most casual map viewers. As map nerds already know, this is due to the common use of the Marketer projection, the most popular map projection today, and almost certainly the one you are most familiar with. The only problem is that it makes countries near the poles look bigger, and those at the equator look smaller. This has distorted our geographical view of the world in a crucial way. One that often leads to misconceptions about the relative sizes of countries and continents. Because the world is a sphere, it is impossible to draw it on a flat surface without distorting it in some way. It is mathematically impossible to get it to lie flat. And that right there is the eternal mess of every map maker. The surface of a sphere cannot be mathematically represented as a plane without some form of distortion. Look at the size of Africa compared to Greenland. It is almost shocking to see Greenland on a map. It is absolutely humongous. It looks about the same size as the whole of Africa. But if you look at the true sizes of the land masses, you'll also see that it is much smaller. In truth, it is no bigger than the Democratic Republic of Congo. You could fit literally a dozen of Greenlands in Africa and still have a lot of room to spare. Greenland is certainly impressively large. If it were its own country, it would be the 12th largest in the world and it is also the largest island on the planet. However, its position near the North Pole has dramatically exaggerated its proportion since it is not, in fact, larger than Africa. Not even close. Although being one of the most prominent American states, smaller than Alaska but bigger than California, it may surprise you that Texas is much smaller than some not so well known African countries. The saying that everything is bigger in Texas likely originated as a reference to the enormity of the state's geographical area. A relatively unknown West African nation like Mauritania is however bigger on balance than Texas. Sudan is bigger and the Democratic Republic of Congo is also larger. What makes the Marketa projection particularly controversial is that it makes Europe and the United States look much larger than they really are in reality, giving them more prominence. Likewise, it takes prominence away from Africa. Some have called it a map made by Europe for Europe. Critics say that this distortion perpetuates imperialist attitudes of European domination over Africa. In the world today, scratch that, since time immemorial, the world has always been shaped by geopolitics. Geopolitics is the study of the effects of arts geography on politics and international relations. It focuses on political power linked to geographical space. In the world of geopolitics, size really does matter. Our perception and interpretation of big countries is different compared to small ones because bigger countries appear more powerful and intimidating. So when we shrink and stretch countries, it gives us an inaccurate mental yardstick for judging their relative sizes of countries. As we all know, 
perceptions are definitively powerful. It is widely perceived that smaller countries or continents are weaker and less significant. Interestingly, the problem with maps is not that Africa is sized incorrectly. As you can see here, Africa is actually the most accurately sized continent on the Makata projection. The problem is not just that the Makata gives an inaccurate picture of the world, although it does. On Makata maps, Africa sitting on the equator reasonably undistorted is left looking much smaller than it really is. This has implications not only for Africa but for the whole southern hemisphere. If you want to see the true size of countries and continents, you can use the Gaul Peters projection. This is an equal area projection which means the land area of each region in the map is shown accurately. Look at the size of Europe, the United States and even Greenland now. The size comparison with Africa is accurate. Apparently, Europe is not as big as we thought previously. Maybe it was also a common belief that each state in America was about the same size as an average African country. But that is not the case. In the 1970s, there was a push to make the Gaul Peters projection the standard map. It is a more accurate alternative to replace Makata. Though clearly it never caught on, as we still use the 500-year-old Makata today. Google Maps, Bing, and OpenStreetMap all use the Makata map as a template despite its obvious flaws. As with all map projections, Gaul Peters is accurate in terms of size, but inaccurate when it comes to other properties, most notably shapes. Apparently, this projection also has its flaws. Notice how the countries in the center are tall and elongated, whereas those at the top and bottom of the map are flat and wide. Gaul Peters may get the size of Greenland correct, but when viewed from above in real life, Greenland's true shape is much closer to what the marketer projection shows. So which is the lesser evil? Would you rather use a map that distorts size or one that distorts shape? Is the shape of your country a more important concern than its size? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Canada is a vast nation, home to six time zones. Its endless plains spread from ocean to ocean, dominating great swaths of the northern half of the globe. But in reality, three Canadas would comfortably fit inside Africa. The African continent has a land area of 30.3 million square kilometers or 11.7 million square miles, enough to fit in the United States, India, China, Turkey, Germany, France, Norway, Spain, Greece, Italy, Colombia, Finland, United Kingdom, Poland, and Ukraine combined. Let us head to the east coast of Southern Africa to Madagascar. It is the fourth largest island and the second largest island country in the world after Australia. However, it looks pretty average on the Makata projection. It is certainly not small, but it doesn't look big either. At number 46 in size, the country is larger than a quarter of the world's countries. It is actually slightly bigger than Sweden, despite what maps would have you believe. When placed in the United States, Madagascar spans the southern border of California and Mexico all the way up to Montana and close to the U.S. border with Canada. Though not a country, Alaska is the largest U.S. state and it is massive. If we go by most maps, it looks as if it would cover most of the Sahara Desert. In reality, it is almost the same size as Algeria, Africa's biggest country. South Africa, when compared to Western Europe, looks like this. 
Let us look at one last example. While nobody thinks that France is a large country, it looks much bigger on the marketer projection. In reality, France is about the same size of an average sized country like Kenya. When you consider this, it is almost unfathomable that a country this small managed to colonize as many as 20 African countries. Makata is popular because of a historical legacy that has persisted since the 16th century, a time when maps were important tools for ocean navigation. If you think about it, it was created for a very particular reason, to help captains and explorers, not to look down upon a particular race. It appears as if the marketer's distortions are to the advantage of the West. But, even though appearances matter, let us endeavor to err on the side of caution, as well as benefit of doubt. When countries favor policies that promote their own importance and their national interests, that is called nationalism. And it would be strange indeed to find a country that does not. Take a look at these Pacific Ocean-centered world maps from Japan, China, and North Korea, highlighting their countries as the centers of the world. Everyone identifies with one's own nation and support for its interests. Sadly, there is no such thing as a perfect map. Because the Earth is a sphere, it is impossible to map it out on a flat surface without errors in proportion. To solve this problem, mathematicians and cartographers have developed a huge library of representations of the globe, each distorting a certain attribute and preserving others. If you're interested in seeing an accurate depiction of the planet, it is best to stop using flat maps and stick with the globe. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent and all matters Africa, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.